Yeah, hello and welcome to my two days quick update according to the Lilliput 663 screens version 2, so the second generation. Um, I'm making this video because I borrowed this S2 model, which is coming with SDI input and outputs, as you can see here. And I found out um, that the Lilliput fixed a lot of the bugs. And um, for example, I also found a workaround, a temporary workaround for the battery plate um, issue because the battery plate is coming off way too easily. And so I thought, why not make a video about it? Uh, because now it's really usable. And yeah, I really want to show what Lilliput fixed in comparison to the version one screens and why I highly, highly recommend to get the S2 and the P2 models, so the second generation screens. But let's start with the hardware. Um, the coding is still quite uh, sandpaper-like, so really keep uh, a microfiber cloth and a wet LCD, sc uh, LCD screen cleaner, for example, in your bag, because you can also use it for the LCD panel and otherwise you're not getting dust that easily off this coating, not a big issue. I think um, way more important is the battery plate adapter because the battery plate adapter is coming off way too easy uh, every time nearly you change the battery at the back. And because the screen is quite heavy already, I don't recommend to use NPF 970 batteries at the back additionally. It's better to have it externally, for example, because you can also power up your yeah, camera, for example, um, your audio recorder, an LED light, and so on, just with one NPF 970 battery. Um, I can show it to you, for example, here I have my uh, power indicator, so I, I can uh, check, for example, the voltage, how many uh, milliamp hours I used, or, for example, I can also plug in this um, small indicator, for example, which I adjusted to 6.2 up to 7.2 volts, so I really know when the battery is depleted, depleted. And for example, here I have an external battery plate um, with an NPF 970 battery, which is powering the LCD monitor and the uh, yeah camera, the GH2. With this uh, external battery adapter, you also have a huge pro that you get an indicator um, um, from scratch on, which is uh, lighting up green um, if you're over 8 volts and red under 8 volts, I think, because uh, fully charged MPF 970 batteries are around um, 6.2, ah, not 6, 8.2, up to 8.4 volts fully charged, which is quite nice because there is no battery indicator built into the 663 models. And um, as said already, you are uh, removing the payload from um, the monitor directly and from your magic arm or wherever you mount it. Um, this battery adapter, by the way, is a DK415 adapter with a cable you can um, attach to anything you want. For example, I mounted um, a 2.5 millimeter plug, which you can see here, for example, which is, which is a universal plug with, a, with screw locks. And then you can, for example, also attach it directly to the battery, external battery plate or to any other battery you have. For example, a, I don't know, a Sony V-Lock or Anton Bauer or a Sony NPF, LPE6 whatever you use. And this is really nice, I have to say, because uh, the, the model is still not coming with a uh, 2.5 millimeter um, DC plug, which is also uh, still the case. For example, you need uh, also this XLR adapter still to use the AC to DC plug adapter, which you can also use uh, with a DK415, uh, just mount uh, the right plug on the cable or use an adapter and you're also ready to shoot without the XLR adapter. Yeah, well, another point which is also quite important is um, the backlight bleeding, um, which is still the case. Um, I, ha I have it a little bit at the bottom, but um, this is uh, the base quality of Lilliput. Don't expect that you always get the best quality. And um, for example, I also ag again and still recommend buy directly from Lilliput because there you, you get full warranty, you get the um, firmware update support, and you can also send it back if the backlight bleeding is, for example, extreme or, for example, if you have a defect or you need replacement parts or anything else. It's way better because with uh, international dealers, you can send back the whole unit. You don't get uh, firmware update support and um, you also cannot be sure is the dealer still um, in business, and for example, after a half year or so. Okay, uh, this was the hardware part. Now let's continue with the software part.
Okay, so let's get to the software part of this um, update video. Uh, to be uh, precise, uh, Lilliput fixed a lot of uh, software issues I mentioned within my first part. Um, there are still a few um, smaller ones like uh, yeah, the hardware issues according to bleeding and so on. But I have to say I was quite um, astonished um, how much Lilliput fixed. Um, first, um, the oversharpening issue. The oversharpening issue was was uh, really significant with the first edition because you always got double edges, for example, here at the overlays. And um, so the image was de kind of degraded from scratch on extremely. And um, here you have now the option, and I think it, it's also possible with the later firmware of the first revision if you pr long press one of the buttons. But here you have now the option in the menu. R4 is, for example, the fourth rotator. And uh, here, uh, no, normally you only see this, but if you turn this knob here, um, you can also go to sharpness, as you can see here, and then you can also select the sharpness, and you can dial down the sharpness from standard 10 or 15, or um, yeah, I think it was 15, to zero, and at zero, it's really, really a nice image then. Um, and this is an issue with many Lilliput screens. Um, also, if you get, for example, the 5D 2OP, dial down the sharpness, you will get a way, way clearer image. Uh, oh, so this is this was one of the big issues with the first generation and this is now fixed and this is really nice. Um, still the case, uh, yeah, as I said already, the backlight bleeding, this model isn't that extreme. Um, again, buy uh, locally at uh, Lilliput uh, Direct Co. UK, for example, if you're located in Europe or at Lilliput, um, at the official Lilliput dealer for your country, because then you get a replacement warranty, uh, overall warranty, software support, um, firmware support, uh, and so on. And um, with overseas dealers, you can ne never be sure, you cannot be sure, are they still in business, for example, a few months, even a few months or weeks later. Um, it's still not 100% calibratable. I tried it um, for a few minutes now because I don't have the time to make it a that precise now, but I think they also changed the color settings basically. Because for example, uh, in the past, um, I didn't use uh, the standard calibrations, but now with a 9300K calibration setting, I can tell you the colors are really, really accurate. And also the, the reds are now a little bit more reddish and not the oranges are red and so on. Still not 100% perfect, perfect, but really, really good compared to the first generation. So again, get the P2 or S2 models and not the original slash P slash S uh, or P and S models. Um, okay, uh, according to the, the yeah, aspect ratio, as you can see here, I'm now at 16 to 9. With the old model, the problem was if you enabled peaking or other features, it switched back to, to uh, the full screen stretched mode. This is not the case anymore. Also, the pixel to pixel mode isn't stretching the image anymore. Um, it's only resetting it sometimes if you uh, switch it off and switch it on and it, if it gets a, a new signal, then you you need to switch it back. Yeah, not that of a big issue, but at least if you switch, uh, changed it once in the menu here to 16 to 9, it also stays in there. Um, by the way, the pixel to pixel mode, um, look at this crosshair here. I, now you can see it a little bit better. Uh, and in the past, uh, with the first generation, uh, it cropped with a pixel to pixel a little bit to the left. This is not the case anymore. Now it's cropping in the middle as it should be. So this is also fixed. Uh, also the crosshair, if you uh, assign it to the buttons, uh, it's also staying, for example, if you want to switch it, uh, switch it on and off with the function buttons. Um, this is uh, now also fixed, which is quite nice. It's a small fix, but nice to see. Um, okay. and. This was it more or less, I have to say. Um, especially the over sharpening, uh, the fixed over sharpening, uh, you can control now um, that easily um, if you assign it once. Uh, yeah, it's really like a new screen and I was really astonished how much uh, Lilliput fixed with the second generation, but I'm still a little bit disappointed. Why wasn't this possible uh, from scratch on with, this, with the first generation? I don't know. I mean, this is an issue with uh, with the advanced features of Lilliput. All the time, they, they throw it on the market and then you need to wait at least a half year or a year until uh, they fix a few of the small bugs. Okay, uh, now let's get to the advanced features. Um, you get audio levels, uh, but uh, as I uh, have a connect, uh, have a GH2 connected here, I don't get audio. Um, you can also select uh, the 
ports at the back, which are uh, right, uh, right and left channel ports, uh, cinch ports. So you can also connect, for example, an external recorder or the headphone, headphone out from your camera body. And you can uh, display it uh, here at the left. Um, it's not u uh, usable here, so I don't show it to you. I'm not that much to see. You can also enable, as you can see here, a waveform, which is you, you can also make bigger, but the resolution is always the same and the resolution is limited uh, of the, the meters. So don't yeah, make them larger because it's not helping anything. Uh, but at least you're getting them. For example, here, uh, I can also show you if you unlock it, um, the, it's updating really, really, really fast, which is quite nice because uh, some screens are very slow updating or the refresh rate is very uh, slow or very low. Um, here uh, is the luminance uh, vector scope, you get a uh, waveform. Here you get also the vector scope. Um, the resolution again is quite limited, but you can really see everything more or less. Um, also there are, are the lines, for example, here um, at the top left for the, the flash tones. Um, there is no zoom feature like uh, on, on, P on the PC, for example, or a Mac um, where you can, can uh, zoom in software wise but it's usable and for example, because you can also use it with pixel to pixel mode, you can use for example, a gray card um, with, uh, with your lens, make it full screen uh, if it's possible, and then you can calibrate the, the, the um, white balance really to the point. Okay, uh, and you also get the, the separate color channels. I only use normally the luminance and the vector scope. So with Y and uh, Y waveform and the vector scope, you get red, green, blue, CB, and CR. And you can also, by the way, which is nice, enable multiple yeah, uh, meters at once. Uh, so for example, here is the standard histogram, which is also, by the way, refreshing really fast uh, as always, or as uh, the waveform, for example, here. Really nice also, you get a separate channel uh, waveform, um, separate channel uh, histogram, sorry. And uh, which is also quite nice, by the way, uh, for example, to check each channel if it's clipping. Uh, and you also get the overlay method. So for example, you can also use the histogram additionally to white balance. You can also have it, uh, yeah, for, you, uh, let's say that way you also see uh, the separate channel clipping, channels clipping, and this is really nice, I have to say. Um, okay, this was it more or less according to the advanced features, I have to say, uh, it's really, really nice to see this in a 300, about or around 300 buck screen. And especially, uh, for example, in studio usage, um, it's really, really nice because you can use it for uh, green screen, blue screen, so for Luma chroma keying, the waveform, for example, you can use it uh, to, to check the, the skin tones with a vector scope to make the white balance on the spot, which is also quite nice. The only thing missing, uh, I personally am missing, is the, uh, is the RGB a parade, which would be great. But uh, I mean, at this price point, it's really nearly nearly unbeatable, I have to say, because uh, the next uh, step um, step up would be a ICANN D5W or D7W, um, which are which are priced around 1,000, 1,200 bucks or so, and for 300 bucks, I mean, four times cheaper at seven inches, if you compare it to the D7W, it's really a bargain. Um, according to my recommendation, uh, peaking wise, it's not the best because you cannot uh, adjust the color, the intensity and so on. It's still not possible, would be great uh, if they uh, add it in, in future models. Um, but I have to say at 1280 by 800, it's really, really easy to pull the focus even without peaking. And especially uh, because it's a little bit bulkier um, and uh, the screen is a little bit bigger for studio usage or for indoor usage, for example, um, green screen, blue screen, and uh, chroma, chroma keying, luma keying, as already mentioned, this screen is really nice. I don't recommend it for on-shoulder usage, uh, usage because uh, that peaking isn't working as good, I have to say. It's working, but it's not that helping, especially because uh, as soon as you, uh, your um, image frame is moving, the peaking isn't helping at all. And because it's a little bit too bulky and heavy and big for a shoulder rig, I have to say. But for studio usage, top-notch. I'm really astonished at what they uh, fixed uh, or uh, how much they fixed uh, from the first generation. Okay, so um, this was uh, my update video. Um, again, a little bit too long, uh, sorry for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it um, and yeah, thumbs up, 
from me f to Lilliput for all the bug fixes and for all for the new features which are also working really really well I have to say if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask subscribe if you like there are coming out also other videos in the future um, there are a lot planned let's say it that way um, yeah and thanks for watching have a nice day bye